Okay, so here's our simple income tax formula. And this is essentially the format that the Form 1040 takes. Again, we start with income, we subtract our deductions, get our taxable income, the taxable income here, multiplied by our appropriate tax rates. So whatever the rate is, and we already did that with we we did our, our big long calculation there with our marginal rates to get to our tax liability. So remember, tax liability divided by taxable income is gonna get us to our average tax rate. So if you follow this, you can figure out the, the average tax rate. You just have to remember this liability and the taxable income that you have to um, determine. Then to get, to arrive at whatever our refund is or the amount that we still owe, we subtract any payments that we've already made, those prepayments, which have probably been done through withholding, but they could have been made through estimated payments as well, or any tax credits that we are allowed. Tax credits, and we have an entire chapter devoted to tax credits, so don't worry too much about the concept of tax credits. At just at this point, understand that tax credits act like prepayments. It's a dollar for dollar reduction in your tax. So if you have a $10 tax credit, it's like you paid $10 already toward your, toward your taxes, okay? Deductions, on the other hand, reduce taxable income. Deductions reduce taxable income, credits reduce tax. And we'll talk about that more as well, just kind of a did you have your, Ryan, did you have your hand up? No. Okay, okay. you're just stretching. I'm just not thinking about it. You're just what? I'm just not thinking about it. Okay. <laughs> All right, so I'm going to show you the tax form so that you can see how this follows. see where this all falls. So income minus deductions equals taxable income. Multiply by tax rate. We'll say rates make that plural because we've got several rates, right? Because we've got that marginal, we, or we've got that progressive system that we've got to deal with. Equals tax liability. Minus, I'm gonna call them prepayments. And credits. Equals tax refund, which would be a, if it's negative, it would be a tax refund or tax due. Okay. All right, so let's take a look at a form 1040. individual tax form. 
Um, now, obviously, the first half of this page is all information that's going to be used to determine what the tax rates are that we're going to use, what credits we might be eligible for. It's all information that can be used. It's not numeric information, like as far as income or expenses or anything, but it's identifying information that helps to classify the taxpayer for purposes of uh, determining which tax rates we're going to apply. So right up at the top, we've got our filing statuses. So as you recall, in payroll accounting, we had different filing statuses on that W-4. Here are the filing statuses that we had. Single, married filing jointly, married filing separately, head of household, qualifying or surviving spouse. We'll go over what qualifies uh, individuals for each of those filing statuses. You do not get to choose your filing status. Your filing status is chosen for you based upon your marital status. Okay? And we'll go through the different uh, qualifications for those. Uh, address, name, all of that stuff. Social security number for the taxpayer and then also for the spouse. So if it's a married couple and they're filing jointly, both of their names have to be listed on this tax form. Okay? It doesn't really matter who's is first. Traditionally, if you know it's if it's male, female, it's been the husband that's gone first. Um, but it doesn't have to be. There's nothing saying the only the only thing that I would always tell clients is just be consistent from year to year. If you know one of you is gonna go first, then go first every year. Um, it just it doesn't, but it doesn't really matter. It doesn't change anything. Um, some other questions that we're going to talk about um, as we move along that are important with regard to some of the deductions um, that we can claim. Uh, dependents. So these are individuals who are claimed as dependents on your tax return. Traditionally, they are usually children, but they don't have to be. Dependents could be other individuals. And in Chapter 2, we're going to go through what qualifies somebody as a, a dependent. Okay, so we see here, our very first line up here, income. Lines 1A through 8 are income items. These are all our income items, and there are different types of income. So line 1, we've got wages, um, household employee wages. So if you worked for a household, maybe as a nanny or as a housekeeper or something, and the wages were not reported on a W-2, that income would be on line 1B. A tip income as well that wasn't reported on your W-2. Um, let's see. Employer provided. So a lot of these, like line 1A, some of them are very specific. Some of them we're going to go through. Some of them are not because it's, they're not as common. Um, We get down to line two, interest income. We're gonna we're gonna look at interest income in line three. We're gonna talk about different types of income in chapter three. I don't mean line three. I meant chapter three. Um, in chapter three, we're gonna talk about different types of income. So lines one a through eight. We're gonna get a general overview of those items when we go through chapter three. Then we add all of that up onto chapter nine. So. The amount that's up here on your income that would have been a total, that would be listed here on chapter nine. You would have totaled everything. Adjustments to income, these are a type of deduction. Uh, and we're gonna go through adjustments in chapter four. Uh, and then we do a kind of a subtotal, and we call this adjusted gross income. Then we've got standard deduction or itemized deductions. This is another classification of deductions. So that's the second line in our simplified formula there. And then we've got this other qualified business income deduction. We'll talk about that in chapter six. That has to do with self-employment income. We add all of our deductions together and then we subtract our deductions. So all of our deductions added together would be the second line on our simplified formula under deductions. We subtract line 14 from line 11. This is your taxable income. So line 15, right here. So we've gone through the very first page. Maybe I can write these down. So these are kind of lines one through, where do we get the total? 
9. And line 9 is our summary of all of those items. And then lines 10 through 14. pertain to our deductions, and this is line 15, okay? And this is on 1040. Okay. So now we're at the bottom of the 1040. So page two. All right, so between lines 15 and 16, We've calculated our tax. Our tax liability ends up on line 16. Here. So these tax rates, it just tells you see instructions. So it tells you then how to how to calculate that. Right? So this one doesn't, the tax rates doesn't really have a line on the form. It's something that's calculated behind the scenes. But the tax liability shows up then on line 16. Uh, lines, oh, this, this would be, line 17 is some additional tax. So I'm going to say 17 and 18. 18 is kind of a summary. That line 17 is for some additional taxes that you might owe. Um, for our purposes, don't worry about that right now. Then we look at some credits. Here, we've got child tax credit here. This schedule three is for credits as well. So prepayments and credits, essentially that takes us down to line 33. So total tax, actually total tax would be line 24. It, they kind of have things. The tax liability, some of the credits are above this line 24 and some of them are below. And we'll get to why that is when we get to chapter 10 um, about the credits. Then, then lines 25 through 33 are our prepayments. Well, it's, like I said, it's kind of funny. So we calculate our tax here. And then we've got some other taxes that we might add. So line, line 18 is a sum of those two. So we've got a total tax there, but then we've got these, this credit. This is a refundable, refundable credit. Yeah, it, it, we'll get to what the difference is because like I said, there's a, there's a credit here. The schedule three are some other credits as well, but then we get back to adding some other tax. So even though this is tax liability minus prepayments and credits, it's actually tax liability minus some credits plus some other taxes minus another credit plus another tax to get to, that, <laughs> to, get to there. So they kind of have some things mixed up in this line 16 to 24. Um, but this is just kind of a, yeah, a general idea. Prepayments and other credits, and you'll see, we'll, get, we'll go to, in the next chapter we talk about a, um, it's, it's a more complex formula, okay? Which will add some of that in here, yeah. Um, so lines, 25 through 23 are our prepayments and then other credits and you can see so federal income tax withheld so if you had amounts withheld from your w-2 from 1099s from anything else that would be added in here those are amounts that you prepaid uh, and then different types of credit if you made any estimated payments those would be added in and then some other types of credit so earned income credit child tax credit American opportunity credit Reserved for future use credit. That's not a credit, that's just a. <laughs> um, and then some other credits that might also be added. All of those are added here. And then the total of all your payments plus all of your credits are listed here. That's, that reduces your tax liability. And then we get to our tax refund or tax due. This comes 
lines 44, uh, I'm sorry, 34 and 35. Don't worry too much about this whole mix up right here. We're not gonna get to, to that complication for a while, okay? So just for, for right now, know that generally speaking, that's how it follows. So you can see that it does follow the income tax bill, the 1040. Questions? Oh, actually I should have said 1037 because if it's a refund, it's through 35. If you owe, it's through line 37. So let me fix this. Okay. So that gives you a general idea of where all of that falls on the tax bill. Payment, mm -hmm. so the tax liability equal the refund. Yeah. So if you do not have a prepayment yeah. and you don't have any credits, then whatever your tax liability is, that's what you're going to owe. Yep. So we could, you know, if we say a hundred thousand deductions, let's say twenty thousand. So taxable income, eighty thousand. We'll make it simple here. We'll say it's a 10% rate, mm -hmm. okay? So 8,000. Sorry, 10. 10%. That's made up, 8,000. Let's say we had withholding of $6,000 over the course of the year. still owe 2000 So a tax due of 2000 Let's say we had withholding of 10000 Now we get a refund of $2,000. Okay? Does that make sense? Yeah. You probably can't see this over there. Yeah, you might want to move <laughs> at some point. I'm probably going to be using this board more than that board just kind of an FYI. Um, unless they completely change up the room and I get boards everywhere, which I've been asking for, but I doubt that'll happen. Makes sense, okay? Questions? No questions? some questions. I don't believe it. So the 1040 is essentially a summary form. You'll notice on the form 1040 that there are references, lots of references, to other forms and other schedules. So for example, here, wages from form 8919, line 6. I don't know what form 8919 is off the top of my head, but if we if we filled out form 8919 and we have a total on line six, we are gonna have to put that total here on line G. Uh, <coughs> taxable dependent care benefits. Again, if we had some taxable dependent care benefits, that means we would have filled out line 2441 and then whatever's on line 26, we're gonna transfer over here. This is, again, it's very much like an income statement. And if you recall in financial accounting, your income statement is a summary, right? You've got lots of other calculations behind the scenes, lots of other schedules. If you look at financial statements, you'll see, you know, they're, they're 100, 200 pages long. Mo most of that, it's not the actual financial statements, it's all the supplemental stuff that goes behind it that then arrives at the final numbers that are summarized on that financial statement. Same thing with the tax return, okay? We have lots of supplemental schedules and things that have to be filled out and then all of those are 
all of the totals from those supplemental schedules and forms are compiled on the form 1040. So this really is a summary form, okay? So when you're doing your tax returns, like your tax return problems in Connect, once we get to the point where you're using some of those schedules and forms of supplements, you're gonna wanna work on those first because those are gonna, all those totals are then gonna transfer over to the form 1040, right? Um, so some other examples, like adjustments to income from schedule one, line 26. Okay, well, if we had any adjustments to income, we would have a schedule one here. You guys are gonna get familiar with the schedule one because there are a lot of adjustments that you work with in your tax return problems um, and in your tax act software problems. Um, but all of that, it's condensed, summarized, and then entered onto line 10, Schedule A. Now we've got a letter instead of a number. The IRS likes their letters and numbers. Um, so if you had a Schedule A, that would be total, summarized, and then entered the total entered on line 12. Yeah? Uh, I mean, the uh, spend for adoption benefits, so you can spend the real bad. Adoption benefits? Yeah. Employer provided adoption benefits. So if there were any, if the employer paid for any adoption benefits that were taxable, so over and, and that would be amounts that are over and above what the expenses are. But if you have adoption, if you received a benefit from your employer, then you would fill out this form 8839 and it would calculate if any amount of that would be taxable. Okay? Right. So, so if you have uh, like an adoption credit because... And that's separate from the benefits. Oh. Adoption credit is something that's gonna show up under our credits. And it's gonna be on schedule three, which is another summary form that where that adoption credit is calculated. It has its own form. So a lot of these forms have supplemental forms as well. The forms have forms. Um, so you might find, and, and that's a good example. So if you've got, there's a credit if you adopt a child, um, there are a couple different types of credits that you may qualify for. You would do the calculation on a form, and then that form, the total from that form would be transferred to the Schedule 3 to be combined with any other credits. And then the total from that Schedule 3 ends up on the second page of this form 1040. Okay, but the, the what I want you to come away with right now is just that this is a summary form, okay? It summarizes all the information that's being gathered from other forms and schedules elsewhere in, um, as part of the tax return. And then of course you have a signature. So now most, most times these days all of this stuff is electronically filed, which is awesome. Um, just because of return is filed and accepted by the IRS doesn't mean that it's not going to be audited. It just means that, yep, your transmission went through. We got it. It could still be audited. So a lot of these different types of income here, you saw that we had, so we had wages, salaries, and tips. We talked about filing status. Wages, salaries, and tips, these are um, this comprises the most common form of income for taxpayers. Um, this would be wages from your employment, right? If you receive a, what's called a W-2 form, that is reported on line one. Now, other types of income, interest income. Interest is money that the a financial institution, usually financial institution, you've lent money to somebody and they're paying you interest on it. When you deposit money in your bank account, if it's interest bearing, you're lending money to the bank. They're paying you interest to borrow your money. That interest income is taxable and has its own line. Um, lots of different types of, uh, of income. Dividend income, we'll talk about those in chapter three. Unemployment compensation as well, that's another type of income that actually goes under other income. It goes on that schedule one that I was talking about. Deductions, there are a couple different types of deductions. Standard deduction and an itemized deduction. I think, has anybody started their homework for chapter one? There might be some problem involving the standard deduction. We can talk about that a little bit more um, if you like once you, once you 
getting to that. These are just forms that are, su are uh, supplied at the end of the year to for individuals to use in preparation of their tax return. But just like with payroll tax, this has its limits, right? We can only use it so far um, because the table only, it doesn't go to infinity, right? Um, so you've got, and I wish I could scroll up my fingers on that, but I can't. We need a new technology. <laughs> So single, married, filing jointly, married, filing separately, head of household. This one has an asterisk because it would also be for anybody qualifying widow or widower. I don't know why they couldn't have just put that there, but they have an asterisk. Income ranges, and then based on the filing status, what the tax is. Okay, so we've got, um, and I think 80,000 actually is there. Our individual up there, and this is for the example that's on the board. Our 
individual is single, 80,000, their tax would have actually been 13,223. So we can put that in there. Or tax rate, we don't know what that is. But does everybody see that? 80,000, between 80,000 and 8050, single, this is single, 13,223. what the tax liability would be for someone who is married filing jointly with income of 78922. Like I said, this works just like the payroll one does. If it falls right on the line, you're going to use the next one up. filing jointly. find out what their marginal tax rate is? 
$78,070. Okay, let's use the table here to figure out what their tax is. liability divided by the taxable income. Income is 78070, which falls between 41775 and 89075, 22%. I know it doesn't really say the, but these are the marginal rates, this table. This table helps you to calculate, by the way. You know how we did each and every line to calculate? This condenses the steps. And I'll show you how here. We'll use it with we'll do it with this um, with this problem here. So this is the marginal rate is 22%. So, we used the table to find this tax. Let's use this schedule to find the tax. See how close we are. All right, so we're gonna take, and you're gonna have to think back to how we did this in payroll as well, okay? Because um, it's the same sort of concept as we used in payroll with the, um, Um, okay, so we're going to take, we find where that income lands on the schedule. So it is over 41,775, but it's not over 89,075. So the amount of tax is 48,0750 plus 22% of the amount over 41,775. Okay. So we, get, we know it's 48.0750. Let's just write that down. But well, we're gonna have to add something to it. We have to figure out 22% of the amount over 41.775. Subtract that taxable income minus 41.775. So, so 78070 minus 41,775. This gets us the excess over 41,775. How much is this? Those of you with calculators, which is all of you. They're giving us this 4807. 
they essentially this 4807 they've already done the math for the amount up here yes. okay. yep exactly so like this 4933 335.50 they've done the math for all of these brackets already for you so you only have to do the last part two nine three 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 seven twelve seven ninety Twelve seven ninety two fifty. Yep. Exactly. So twelve seven ninety four over here. But remember, the table is not exact. We've got a range of income that we're using with that table. So very rarely are you going to come exactly up, up exactly with the same number. Okay, it's going to be different. But I know that you have homework problems that will tell you use this method, and you've got homework problems that will tell you use the table. Okay, so make sure you're paying attention to which method you're supposed to use with that calculation. Um, so, excuse me. Mm -hmm. uh, over there is 36294.5 because I'm sitting here 150. So I'm add is 295. So if you left this one, you can reduce this one for one. So yeah, this one is 36. 294.5. 294.5. So what's 22% of that? Look at our let's look at the table first. So this is Mary filing jointly. Is appendix 
everybody can benefit from 